Hello my friends, I'm Clover and today we are solving Dead or Alive Arrows 2 by Bill Murphy. So we have normal Sudoku rules, so we're placing the digits 1 through 9 once each in each row, each column, and each outlined 3x3 region. And in addition, there are some outlined white arrows in the grid and then there are some non-outlined gray arrows. Wherever there's a white arrow, whatever digit appears in that white arrow has to appear at least one more time in the direction the arrow is pointing. So for example, because this white arrow has a 2 in it, one of these cells has to contain a 2. For the gray arrows, if a digit appears in a gray arrow, then that digit is not allowed to appear again in the direction that the arrow is pointing. So for instance, because this arrow has a 2, none of these cells may have 2s. So we're going to start with these arrows kind of around the periphery, because there's only one cell they're each pointing to, so that has to be a 1, a 4, a 6, and an 8. And then we're going to turn to these arrows, because it is not a coincidence that they have the same digits in them as these gray arrows here. So this gray 7 means that they can't be a 7 here, but there has to be a 7 on this line, so it must go there. This gray 5 means there is no 5 here, but there has to be a 5 on this line, so it goes there. It's gray 2 means that there is no 2 there, but there has to be a 2 on this line, so it goes there. And this gray 3 means no 3 here, but there has to be a 3 on this line, so it goes there. Now we're going to do a bit of Sudoku. We have 1s here and here, so the only position for 1 in this top right region is there. We have 4s here and here, so the only position for 4 there is right there. We have 6s here and here, so 6 has to go there. And we have 8s here and here, so 8 has to go there. Now we're going to turn our attention to these rows, row 3 and row 7, and columns 3 and 7 as well. So let's see what we can do with these. So in this column we still need a 3, a 4, a 5, and a 6. And we have three of those digits in this row already, so this is going to be a naked 3. And now because there's a 5 here we can't put 5 in these two cells, so 5 has to go there. And that makes our last two digits, 4 and 6, disambiguate like this. In this column, we need a 1, a 2, a 7, and an 8. We already have 1, 2, and 8 here, so this will be a 7. We can't have a 2 in these cells because of the 2 there, so that's our 2. And then the rest of the column is 1 and 8, because if there's already an 8 in row 6, we can go ahead and tell which way around those have to go. In this row, we need 5, 6, 7, and 8. 6, 7, and 8 makes this a 5. We can't put a 7 in these cells, so 7 has to go here. And then we need 6 and 8. There's a 6 there, which resolves which way around those go. And finally, we need 1, 2, 3, and 4 in this row. 1, 3, and 4 here gives us a 2. There's no 3 in these cells, so 3 goes there. And 1 and 4 go into these two positions. And now I'm going to do something a little unusual, because this is kind of the tricky part of the puzzle. This is where it gets a little bit spicy. And I'm going to pencil mark these four digits, just so you guys can see a little bit more clearly what is going on in these corner regions. And I'm going to do that for all of my corner regions. This is actually what I did while I was solving this the first time. And don't feel concerned if you do need to do this to kind of help you visualize what's going on in a puzzle. However you are able to solve it is fine with us. So I'm going to make a couple of quick eliminations just based on what's already in the rows and columns. And then we're going to turn our attention to these two white arrows, okay? So this arrow points up here, and whatever is in it has to also be in one of these cells. So it's either a 2, or it is a 3, 4, 6, or 9, because those are the only digits that can possibly live in these cells. However, this cell already sees 3, 4, 6, and 9 in those cells. So it can't be 3, 4, 6, or 9, it must be a 2. That gives us a few cute little things. It tells us that there's a 2 there in that region because of these two 2s, which eliminates 2 down here. It also tells us that 2 is in this cell because of these two 2s, which eliminates a 2 here, and we can actually now place a 2 in that region right there. Now let's do something similar here. So this arrow is looking down into this corner. It is a 5, or it's a 1, 7, 8, or 9, if it's pointing at one of those two. But it already sees 1, 7, 8, and 9, so it must be a 5. That places a 5 here, and these two 5s also place a 5 right there. That eliminates 5 from these three cells and lets us place a 5 in this region. Now let's finish off with a little bit of Sudoku. 
So we're going to place a 7, 8 pair there, a 3, 4 pair here. These two digits have to, have to be a 1 and a 3, and we know their order because there's a 1 there, so that's a 3 there and a 1 there. We can eliminate 3 from there. These are going to be 6 and 7. There's a 7, there is a 6. And that should give us enough information that we can get a little bit more value out of these arrows in the middle at this point. So these are going to be a 3, 8 pair. That's a 3, and that is an 8. That makes this a 7. And here I need a 4 and a 7. That's a 4, that's a 7. That was an 8 all along. That's going to make this a 7. So now this 8 arrow has to see an 8. It can't see an 8 right here. These two can't be 8s, so that must be an 8. And that makes this a 9. And a lot of stuff is just going to resolve via Sudoku at this point. And we could have also used that other arrow symmetrically, I'm sure, to get this, but I just kind of sneakily got it via classic Sudoku techniques. Either way is fine. And to finish off the grid, we place the last three digits in the center region. And that is how you solve Bill Murphy's Dead or Alive Arrows 2. I really enjoyed that one. If you want to try it yourself, the link to do so is in the description below this video. And I will see you again in three days.